welcome to the Get Ready for Track Season webinar for Standard Video Systems. Uh, some of our objectives for today's webinar, uh, the introduction, I'm going to let you guys know what a standard video system is and what it's capable of. Uh, we're going to go over signal flow, so components of your system, uh, and how those components connect to each other. Uh, we're also going to discuss show control and the two uh, pieces of software that make up show control, so both Display Studio and Content Studio. And within Content Studio, we're going to discuss RTD information. Then we're going to cover support resources, so all of the tools available to you guys online to help you out with your systems. And then we're going to have a session for uh, questions and answers. So a little bit more in depth, hopefully from this webinar, you'll take away um, uh, understanding what your standard video system is and what it's capable of. Uh, complete signal flow and overall setup, so once it's on site, you guys will understand how to set up your systems. Uh, how you actually connect your track stats program into the Dactronic system, so what connections we use to get that information into our system. Uh, understand Display Studio and how you're going to trigger content. Uh, understand how to build your, your stats frames for RTD data in Content Studio, and I'll explain a, a little bit more in depth what RTD data is, but essentially it's just your statistical information from the track timing software, and then again, we're going to have our question and answer session. So hopefully, uh, once this training is complete, uh, again, you'll understand your standard track video system uh, and how signal flow is and how show control works. So an introduction to what a standard video system is. Standard video systems are systems that are comprised of standard equipment components that do not require a custom design to meet your needs. So essentially, they're complete packages that are ready to go upon installation because all of the configurations required to, to uh, have them function correctly are already preloaded. So we like to think of them as a plug-in and play. Once you have power to the system, they're ready to go. And the components of a standard video system have the ability to display a live video, animated and still content, as well as statistical information on a video display. So with these systems, your audiences can stay fully informed of event information. So you can have messages going, you can have statistical information, um, and that can be going as well as uh, keeping your uh, audience entertained through the use of graphics and capture video and or live video. So again, a standard video system is just a ready-to-go system. All the configurations are, are uploaded onto the system. Uh, all the components are ready to go. So essentially, once they have power and they're connected to each other, your video board is ready to start your show. So now we're going to cover signal flow. Um, and in this section, we're going to cover what each component in a standard video system is, where the components are housed, and how do they all communicate to each other. So the components of a standard video system are typically housed within a control rack. And most control racks uh, look a lot like this. They're about three to four feet high. And signal is going to flow from the bottom of these control racks to the top and then out to your display. So within a rack, a control rack, you have a UPS, you typically have a digital media player, and you have a video image processor. Uh, DVD players and TriCasters can be included as well as other video sources to give you more pieces of information for your display. So signal flow. Um, again, the UPS, which is located at the bottom of the rack, stands for uninterruptible power supply. And you can think of this UPS as a giant battery for your rack. Its primary purpose is to keep your rack running for a small amount of time should your site lose power for any reason. So UPSs typically have a 20-minute battery life window once power on your site is lost. And what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to close down any programs that you may be running on your electronic system, and it's going to allow you to follow the standard shutdown procedure to ensure that everything is shut off correctly. And Dactronix does have a standard startup and shutdown procedure for your standard video system to ensure the longevity of life of both your hardware and your software. After the UPS, we have the DMP8000. So the DMP8000 is a digital media player. This digital media player stores content and configurations for the entire system that you guys have. The primary configuration for your standard video system uh, is what we call a layout file. And this layout file determines how your video display is going to be laid out. So typically, content can be played to a full screen look, as is shown here, where we see live video going the full height of our display and the full width. But you can also have content played to individual zones at one time. That way, you can give viewers multiple pieces of content 
So essentially you can have live video going on on one section, graphics playing on another, and maybe statistics playing on the other third. Um, and just to give you an idea of what maybe an in-event look would be like, uh, your full screen look would cover this entire look here, but then you could have statistical information here, sponsor information here, while you have live video playing up in the upper right portion. So that's just essentially what a layout file is doing, is it's breaking your board up into uh, your two different looks. So you essentially have your full screen look and you have your in event look um, that gives your audience all the information that you need. So the DMP8000 not only stores all your configurations, but it also again stores all your content. So all of your graphics, all of your animations, any of your captured video sources, your highlight reels, they all live within your digital media player along with your configurations. And content and information from the digital media player goes into the video image processor via a DVI cable. So we're connecting the brain to the image processor again via a DVI cable. And the DIP5160 is what we call a digital image processor. And the model can vary depending on your site. So sometimes you'll see a DIP5060 or you'll see a DIP5160, but their purpose is the same. What these image processors are doing is they're taking signal from the DMP8000 and they're turning it into an acceptable format for our video displays. And this acceptable format is a fiber connection typically. So your, your signal flow for a standard video system is you have your UPS, which is located at the bottom of your rack, which powers everything on. And then you have your digital media player, your DMP8000, which is the brains of your operation. And the information here flows into your image processor via a DVI connection. And then from here, it gets converted into a fiber connection that our video display can understand. So that's the signal flow for the components, like all of the hardware. Next, we have our show control computer. And show control is the front end system that controls content creation and when that content is triggered to play on your video board. And show control is connected to a standard video system via an Ethernet connection that goes into the standard video rack. And this uh, network switch that the Ethernet connection is uh, connected into is typically located at the top of your Nectronics rack. Um, also, again, if you have TriCasters or replay devices or DVD players, those video sources are going into your 8000 player via an HDMI or an SDI cable to provide those extra live video sources. So again, you have your rack, the UPS is at the bottom, it's your big giant battery, and then you have your digital media player, which is a DMP8000, which houses your configurations and your content. And the information here flows into our digital image processor via that DVI connection, and then out of our image processor, the signal that we've converted goes into our display via fiber. And then show control tells this 8000 what to do via an Ethernet connection. So that's our signal flow for a standard video system. Now, to connect your track equipment into the Dactronic uh, standard video system, for system setup, what you guys are going to do is you're going to use an Ethernet cable to connect the finish link's laptop into a network switch. And this network switch is typically the same network switch that Show Control is coming into. So the same Ethernet connection from Show Control into this network switch has a couple other ports ready and available for your track system. And then with a second Ethernet cable connection, you're going to connect the high-tech laptop into this network switch. And finally, once you have show control, the finish links, and the high-tech laptop computer connected into this network switch, you're going to make sure that the network switch is connected to the router that's in the top of your Dactronics rack. And then once you have both the finish links laptop computer connected, and the high-tech laptop computer connected, you're going to set up your photo finish equipment for your track meet according to the quick start guide for your system. And these quick start guides are found at www.finishlinks.com, and this link is available to you in one of the pods. Um, but when you come to this website, you'll see a list of every single quick start guide available for finish links and high-tech, and you'll find the system that matches your setup so typically it's finished links um, meet manager. Just go ahead and click on it. It'll download the file and it's going to be a, a PDF format. And then you just follow the directions for how to set up your photo finish equipment. 
Um, and if you need in more information on Finish Links or your high tech information, uh, Finish Links does have their own YouTube channel to show you visually how you can set up their track equipment into our system. I do want you guys to keep in mind, Ethernet cables can't go beyond 300 feet or their signal is lost. So just be aware that your Finish Links laptop, your high tech laptop, and show control can't be more than 300 feet from your Dectronic standard video rack or you're going to need an extra switch to uh, lengthen that signal. Because again, Ethernet cable connections can't go beyond 300 feet. Okay, so now that we understand what all of your components in your standard video system are, you have your player, your image processor, your video display, we're going to talk about show control. Um, because show control is what essentially is telling your entire system what it's supposed to be doing and how the content is going to look. So what show control is essentially? A show control system includes both Display Studio and Content Studio. Display Studio is seen as the face of the display control system. And it's seen as the face because your primary interaction with show control is going to be with Display Studio. So Display Studio is where all of your buttons are going to live that trigger the content and trigger the commands for telling your display and your 8000 what they should be doing. Um, also within Display Studio, you can monitor a couple aspects of the system's health. So you can monitor your stats information that's coming in from Finish Links and High Tech, and you can also monitor your 8000 to make sure it's running as it should be running. The second part of Show Control is what we call Content Studio. And Content Studio is the software that allows you guys to design presentations with text, graphics, video, and real-time data. And real-time data is what we call the statistical information that's coming from Finish Links and High Tech. So your Finish Links computer and your High Tech laptop are getting the timing information, the lane information, and, and all the information about all the players that are in the event. And it's converting it into what we call RTD. And that's just a statistical format that our systems understand so that we can display it digitally up on our video board. So <clears throat> now we're going to get into show control so that I can show you guys how we actually trigger content on our video boards and how we create that content. But before we get into show control, I wanted to ask you guys if you had any questions about signal flow, the components, and what a standard video system is. We good on that? We're ready to go into the demo? All right, now we're going to go over uh, the demo for show control. So I'm going to show you guys within Display Studio uh, what a monitor wall is and how we get it set up, uh, what our two types of containers are that we have available on standard video sites, and then how we build our buttons to trigger our content. And then we're going to open up Content Studio, and I'm going to show you guys how you can import your images and your videos, how you can create your text boxes so you can make your messages for your audience, and then again, we're going to focus on how we build those RTD frames. So how do we get that track information that's coming from Finish Links and High Tech onto our video display? So when you first open up Show Control, uh, you're going to be met with Display Studio. And this is the first page for Display Studio. Um, up here in the top left corner is what we call our hub. And essentially, it's going to give you all the information uh, available to you for all of the options that you have within Display Studio. So we have New, which allows you to create workspaces. And workspaces is this container as a whole. So most of the time, people name their workspaces according to their score. So you can name it Track 2016, 2017. Um, most of the time, Track shares the same field with soccer and football. So you could have three separate workspaces just to make sure you don't accidentally play a football graphic during a track meet. Um, so workspaces allow you to keep everything organized according to sport and according to venue. And then you can also delete any workspaces that have been created um, on accident or you're done with those particular sports for the time being. Properties is going to allow you to change some aesthetic qualities. So if your organization, your team, or your school has uh, a primary red color, 
You can make your show control. You can give it some red accents just to make it match your school. You can also lock your buttons into containers. You'll see a little orange or yellow lock appear on your show control. And that's just going to prevent um, your buttons from being moved, your containers from being messed with, so that every time you open up show control, everything is set to the way it, uh, you left it. You also have help. And this is going to be the manual for show control. And it's an interactive PDF manual. So once this training is over and you open up your show control system and you're like, wait a minute, how did Ashley say I get into the Content Studio Elements? You can click on that and it'll jump straight down to it. And it's going to give you directions and pictures for how to mess with the elements within a Content Studio timeline. So you do have that manual available to you by choosing Help. And then Close Workspace and Exit Display Studio is essentially going to shut down Show Control and Display Studio. All right, so the monitor wall. The monitor wall is this darker gray section that's up at the top half, or I should say top third of Display Studio. To access your monitor wall, you just want to right click. The only option you guys will ever see is Properties. And what that's going to do is it's going to flip the monitor wall over, and now it's going to make it configurable for your site. And typically with our monitor walls, what we like to do is we like to build a virtual display of what um, is going out to our video board. So typically, you guys have a full screen section, which is content that takes up the entire height of your video board and the entire width. And for our purposes, my video board is 336 tall by 600 wide. So this is just a virtual representation of 336 pixels by 600 pixels. And then I also have my layout built to that picture I showed you guys earlier. So I have a bottom section, which I'm going to add. I have a left section, which I'm going to add. And then I have a scaled video section, which is where my graphics and my animation are going to play. And once you have your monitor wall built out to all of the sections available to you within your layout file, you can adjust the size of these monitors. So my bottom section doesn't need to be this large. So I can take it and I can squeeze it down. That way I can get all of my monitors in one page. And these are configurable, so you can change the order if you want it to be your left section, your scale video, and your bottom bar. If you want your bottom bar to be beneath the video section, like it actually is in your layout, you can drag it. So you have your full screen zone, and then when you're in event, you have a left section, scale video, and you have your bottom section. But if you want to leave everything individualized, you can just drag it back out, and it snaps it back to its full size. And again, you can drag and adjust the length of these uh, zones as needed. If you want to zoom in and out of your picture, once you have a portion of your monitor wall highlighted yellow, you can zoom in and out of whatever image is on your display. If you've accidentally zoomed or adjusted these and didn't mean to, if you hit the little dot in the center here, it restores everything to the default settings from when you first added it. And if you only want to have your full screen zone up here, you don't care about having your individual sections, you can click on these and just hit minus, and it's going to get rid of them. But for our uh, training purposes, I'm just going to leave everything up there. Once you have your monitor wall configured, you have all your zones up there and ready. You have them zoomed in. They look the way you want them to. Go ahead and hit Save, and your monitor wall is going to flip over. Um, so now whenever I create a button and I trigger content to play here, uh, we're going to see representation appearing in our monitor wall. So down here is our workspace page. And our workspace page houses our containers. And Dactronix has two types of containers for standard video systems. We have scripting containers, and we have quick display containers. And the difference between the two, a scripting container allows you to create a button that would allow you to play the content to all four of these sections at one time. And if you had multiple displays on site, you would be able to control all of those displays at one time. Quick display containers only allow you to control one item at a time. So if I have a quick display container, it's only ever going to play to full screen. That quick display container will never be able to control the scale video section. So just be aware, when you make a container, and if you get into a container, you just right click down in your workspace page, you go to new, and you'll see either scripting or quick display container. Just be aware, if you choose a quick display container, it's only controlling one item. It doesn't have the ability to control everything on site. So for our training purposes, I'm going to stick with a scripting container. That way I can show you um, activating all of these zones at one time. 
So choose Description Container, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to go ahead and maximize it so it takes up my entire workspace page. And now I'm going to create a button to play something from my full screen zone. So to create a button, again, you're going to right click, and New Button will be the very first option. If you guys have noticed, everything in here to get to all of your options is a right click. So up in your monitor wall, right click gives you properties, and down here in your workspace page, right click gives you the ability to filter buttons. So I'm going to select New Button, and I'm going to hit the plus. And for standard video systems, you guys will be choosing a DMP 8000 player in step one. Um, my particular system on my computer, I have a 7000 player, so I'll be selecting this. But just be aware, for standard video systems, you will always be choosing DMP 8000 player control in step one when you build your button. And then in step two, you're going to choose the zone that you want this button to talk to. And again, I want it to talk currently to my full screen zone. I'm going to choose full screen. And then in step three, you're telling this button, what do you want it to do? So when I click on this button, if I have play selected, that means whatever content I select in step four is just going to play out to my display. However, I could choose to make this particular button a blank sign, which means when I click on this button, it's going to blank whatever is playing on full screen, and we'll see what's playing on the layers beneath it, which is our in-game look. Because our full screen configuration always sits on top of our event look, which is our little L bar look, where we have content on the left, the bottom, and information in our scale video section. So here in step three is you're telling your button what you want it to have the ability to do. But for the most part, I would say 95% of the time, you're building a button that is just play my content out to the display. So in step four, this is where we choose the content that is playing to the display. And to do that, you're just going to select Add. And then you can come in here, and you can choose a piece of content. And you can hit Open. And then in step five, you're going to tell your button, all right, I've selected the player that I'm playing the content on. I've selected the zone it's going to. And then I've told the button it's just a play button. And then in step four, I've decided that I'm playing my host black piece of content. And then in step five, I want it to play continuously. So I want it to play a certain number of times. So if this were a commercial, I only want it to play, let's say, twice. I could come up here, and it'll play twice. And if it's a 30-second commercial, it'll run for a solid minute, and then it'll blink itself. Um, so this area here in step five is just telling my button how long I want this content to play. And then the last step you have to do when you're building a button is you have to choose what you want your button to be named. Otherwise, it will default name itself whatever you choose in step three. So since I chose play, it default named itself play. But if I chose blank sign, it would default name itself blank sign. So just be aware that whatever you choose in step three is what your button will default name itself. So once you're done building the entire button, just come in here and make sure you rename it what you need it to be. So I'm just going to do it host black. Make sure that that's what I selected. Come in here to default, choose host black again, hit open, and now I hit save. Now, this isn't going to make any content appear on our display because we haven't created any content yet in Content Studio. But that is the steps for building your button. And then I would click it. You would see completed. We would see the countdown timer, which means I have a black file playing to my full screen right now. And you see in the scripting container, completed playing both black continuously on our full screen zone. All right? So once we get into Content Studio and we get some stats frames built and we get some sponsor frames built, We'll come back into Display Studio, and I'll build a few more buttons that is going to actually play content on these zones. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and go through Display Studio and show you guys how you build that button. If you ever uh, click on a button and it's not doing what you wanted it to do, if you right-click back on it and go into Properties, it opens back up the steps of your button. So if you accidentally selected the wrong file, you can click on it, go back into Step 4, select Edit, and then go choose the file um, that you meant to actually select. And then go ahead and hit Save. The button will flip back over, and then you can re-click it. Now, I mentioned that within Display Studio, you can monitor your system's health. Down in the lower left-hand corner of Display Studio, you have a little status light. This status light can be one of three colors. It can be green, yellow, or red. Green means everything is go, your system is ready. When you click a button, content should more than likely play. The second color that it can be is yellow. It doesn't necessarily mean any of your systems are broken or any of your systems have a major issue. 
it might just mean a player needs to be restarted, a digital image processor needs to be restarted because it can't communicate. Now, if you see a red light, that means a piece of software is not working or a piece of hardware is not working. Nothing can communicate, so nothing is going to be up on your display. If you ever see a light down here other than green, yellow, or red, if you click on it, this little uh, status bar will pop up. And whatever the error is, it will populate right here. So Display Studio will tell you exactly what is wrong. So just for example, it, it might say DMP 8000, no services. So that just lets you know you need to go into your 8000 player and restart it so that your computer can reestablish the connection with the system. So again, you have three colors. You have green, yellow, and red. Green is OK. Everything's good. Yellow, everything's still OK. You might just need to check a system or a piece of software. Red means you do legitimately have an issue that you need to check before you can go on with your event. All right. So next, we're going to jump into Content Studio so we can get some content created to put up on our video board. To access Content Studio, you're going to click on this pencil icon, and that's going to launch Content Studio. And when you launch it, this is what it's going to look like. And the toolbar up here is going to look pretty familiar to uh, programs like Paint, uh, Microsoft Word, um, uh, PowerPoint, things like that. Because essentially in here, what you're making is slideshow presentations for your display. So to make a presentation, I'm going to go ahead and hit New, and I'm going to choose Display. And for our first purposes, I'm going to choose Scale Video, because I'm going to make a sponsor's graphic before I make a stats graphic for you guys. So I'm going to choose Scale Video. So it's the section that's 256 pixels tall by 460. So it's a little bit smaller than our full screen section, which was 336 by 600. And again, I'm playing right now. I'm creating content for this section right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose Scale Video. I'm going to hit Next. And within Content Studio, we're going to see a small little virtual representation of our Scale Video uh, section up here, here in Content Studio. And if you ever forget which portion of your video board you selected, down here in the lower left-hand corner, it will tell you the size of it. So if you see 256 by 460, you know, OK, I'm not working in my full screen zone. I'm working in my scale video zone. All right? So within Content Studio, I want to show you guys how to import images, how to import video, how to create some text boxes, and then I'm going to go over how you build your stats frame. So for importing images, up here in your Home tab, you'll notice that there's a quick insert toolbar. You're going to select the media item, and then you'll see a drop down of both picture and video. And first, I'm going to start with picture, because what we're going to do is we're going to build out a sponsor's window. So you're going to navigate to the folder that has your content. Typically, it's usually on a USB drive, because you're dragging uh, content from your marketing department or your PR department, and you're building these, um, these graphics frames for them. And I'm just going to start with a sponsor. And when I create a sponsor, you'll notice that this Import Image um, Properties tab has appeared. And these little blue boxes are cropping tools. So if you only want to grab a certain portion of an image, you can certainly do that. And then once you've cropped it, you can actually move that cropping box around. If you cropped an image and you did not need to, if you click on this uh, little icon right here, it's going to go back and select your entire image. That way you can set everything back to your default. So you have your crop tools, and you have your default selector back over here. And then up under Options, you can choose to import it as Best Fit, Stretch, or Normal. Typically, you want to choose Best Fit, because what you guys want to do is you want to have all of your content created pixel perfect. So if I were doing this on a true system, I would want this particular piece of content to be 256 pixels tall by 460 pixels wide. So within Photoshop or After Effects, that's how I would export it because our Dectronic standard video systems are meant to play content, all content, pixel perfect. So I would choose Best Fit. And then I would go ahead and select Import, and it's going to maintain the aspect ratio of my image. And I'm going to go ahead and move it around and get it centered. Uh, but if I wanted to take up my full display, I can always right click on the image. I can switch it over to Stretch. That way I can take these green boxes, and I can make it fit my full images of my section. Um, you don't typically want to do this because it's going to distort your image. We want to keep it pixel perfect. But if needed, you can always switch it back over to your stretch mode um, to get your image to fit your full display. 
So now to make a sponsor's presentation, I'm going to add two more layouts and bring in two more images to create a sponsor's presentation for us. And to add more pictures into the Content Studio, all you have to do is come over here to Layout, select Add, and it's going to give me a new canvas to work on. And then I'm going to go to Media Item, I'm going to choose Picture, and I'm going to insert another sponsor. I'm going to include everything as is, choose Import. Again, I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to change it to Stretch. That way I can fill this graphic out to the full width of my display. Then I'm going to add one more, bring in one more sponsor. I'll grab United Way, leave him as is, right click on it, stretch it out so that I can make it last the full width of my display. And then on this last page, what I'm going to do is now that I have a timeline of three different sponsors, because this is my final sponsor, I'm going to add a piece of text. And I'm just going to say, thank you for coming to today's track meet. And then when I click out of my little box, I can move the text box around. So I can adjust this green box so that all of my font and all of my text is visible on my display. So to add a text box, all you have to do is click on text box. It's going to turn your cursor into a text box, and you can click anywhere on your uh, display. And then you have a brand new text box created that you can type into. So when your text box has the yellow box around it, that's when you can edit the content within. When it has the green box around it, that's when you can move your text box around. So now I have a presentation that if I want to preview, all I have to do is grab the scrub bar, move it back to the beginning, and then I can hit play. And now for 10 seconds, you'll see the Centene Corporation sponsor. And then 10 seconds later, it'll switch over to National City. And then 10 seconds later, it'll switch over to United Way with my thank you for coming to today's track meet message. And I can have this sponsor graphic playing in my scaled video section for a few minutes after the track meet so that all the sponsors get their air time. But we also have a message thanking the um, viewers for coming to today's track meet. And we can always stop our preview at any time so that we can go back and edit any of our presentations. Once you've created your presentation, all you have to do is choose uh, Save As. And then you can create a new folder. And I'll just create one for this purpose called Sponsors. Hit OK. Go ahead and go into my folder. And I'll do training Sponsors. And you can name your content whatever you choose to. Go ahead and hit Save. And now I have a Sponsors graphic created. And we have three different images. And we also have a piece of text thanking the viewers for being at today's track meet. So that's how we import images into Content Studio. You select the canvas that you want to work on by choosing Display. You can choose whatever section you want to work on. And then you're using this media item, Quick Insert, to do it. Now we're going to talk about importing your RGB information, so importing in your stats. To do this, I'm actually going to grab another picture and bring it into our display because I have a background already created for our stat box. And I'm going to go ahead and import it. And it's sized correctly to my display, so I don't have to do any stretching or any best fit or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and lock it down. There's a little lock right here that you can select. And now this graphic can't accidentally be moved around. Because if I unselect it and I'm moving these statistics around, I might accidentally select my background, and I didn't mean to do that. So if I go ahead and lock it down, I can't ever accidentally adjust my background, so my uh, statistics are always going to be in alignment with each other now. So to build out a stats frame, over here in your dynamic data library, you'll see category. And on some of these categories, you'll often see multiple sports listed. But for track and field, you guys will select your category of track and field. And once you do that, you'll see a bunch of folders appear over here for all the different types of systems that Dactronics has out there available to you. Um, but for training purposes, I'm going to choose Finish Links Track Timer um, as our default setting. And when you select this, you'll see all of the information that Finish Links and HiTech can feed to the Dactronic Standard Video System. So on those laptops, you're entering in information such as event title, event number, round number, heat number. You're entering in the name of the 
the person who's running in uh, lane one and the entering in the name of the person who's running in lane two. You can also enter in their affiliation. And then as they cross the start finish line, you can populate their time. So to build these stats frames, it's a simple click and drag. So for my header for this graphic, I'm just going to want to have the event title. So in order to do that, I select event title, I hold down my left click button, and I drag it over onto my display. And then I can adjust where it's going to appear. So now when I play out this graphic, whatever the event title gets entered into the finish link for high tech laptop as will appear up here at the top of my graphic because this event title XXX is just a placeholder for statistical information. Um, whatever comes into the stats computers is what will actually appear on your display. These placeholders are so you can know what color you want your font to be, what size you want your font to be, um, you know, what, what type of font do you want your, your uh, information to appear as. Because if you have a custom font for your site, maybe you want to show your font on your display and not just stick with the standard Arial or Calibri. Um, but building out a stat stream, again, is just click and drag. So I've told uh, the audience what the event title is for this graphic, so now I'm going to build out the lanes. So for line one, I can drag in place, and then I can drag in lane, and then I can fill out all of the information for line one and lane one. I can say that this is their name, this is their affiliation, so their school or their organization. And then finally, the information that most people are interested in, what was their time for their event? And I can put it over here on the far right hand side. And it is okay if information within Content Studio overlaps because typically these placeholders that we have built are a lot longer than the actual information that's coming in because typically the name comes in as last name, the affiliation comes in as an abbreviation. So if their name is Baldwin High School, their affiliation is typically BHS, and then your time comes in on the far right hand side. So this is how you build out your stats frame. You pick and choose the information that is available to you via your high tech or your finish links computer, and then you, you actually choose what information your audience sees. So if you want them to see all of the information, place, lane, ID number, name, affiliation, and time, you can drag all of that information onto your display. Just make sure that your background graphic is capable of supporting all of the information because we don't want uh, too much information on here with a graphic that has lines in the way of our information. So that's how we build these RTD frames. It's just a simple coming over here, choosing track and field, choosing what timing system we have, and then I can go over here and I can choose track timer if I wanted to. And I can drag information from the track timer. So everything with a stat, building your stats frames, your RTD frames, is choosing your category and then choosing your timer and then a simple click and drag onto your display. And then once you have your stats frame built, and I'll go ahead and get rid of this extraneous information, you can get everything in alignment. So I can click a box and grab all of the elements on my presentation right click, I can go to the line, I can align everything to the top, and then I can bring it back down, and now I know that everything is in alignment on the same pixel with each other so that when it displays on my display, things aren't looking wonky and crooked uh, on the video board. Once you have everything built out on your stats screen, again, you can go into your save as. And then I already have a folder called stats, and then I'll just name this one webinar stats, and go ahead and save it. So that's how you guys are building your RGB frame. It's just a simple click and drag, screening in your images and your videos. Over here in Quick Insert, you choose picture or video. Bring in the video is the exact same as bringing in a picture. That little tab is going to pop up, um, and it's going to ask you, you know, do you want to crop anything off of the video? Do you want to crop the size of the video? And then you just choose to import it. Um, so just remember, Quick Insert is probably going to be your best friend in terms of bringing in pictures, videos, and then adding in your text boxes, typing in any of your information. So that's how we use Content Studio. We, we bring in our images, we bring in our videos, and we create our stats frames on our backgrounds that we've created, and then we save them. And then we can go back into Display Studio, and we can play these items. So I can choose a new button. I can hit the plus sign. Make sure you guys are choosing 8,000 player control. 
And then in step two, I want to play the stat screen to full screen. And then step three, it's just a simple play. And then in step four, I'm adding my content. And in stats, I built out webinar stats. And you'll see a little preview of what we built in Content Studio. I hit open, I come up here, and I change it from play. And I typically name my buttons, whatever the name of the piece of content is. And then go ahead and hit save, click on that, and then we see our stats graphic appearing here. We don't see any of the statistical information coming in because unfortunately I don't have a finished link or a high tech laptop to give me track information. But if you wanted a preview of what your button's going to be doing, just in step four, you can double click on your information, go back into it, and you'll see a picture representation of what your stats information is going to appear as. And then if I wanted to see that sponsors graphic I built that was playing on scaled video, all I have to do is again choose new button hit the plus. Again, you guys will be choosing 8,000 player control. And then in step two, instead of choosing full screen, I choose scaled video. And then step three, again, it's just a play. And then step four, I'll choose our training sponsors loop that I created. I'll go ahead and hit open. I'll change the name from play back to sponsors. Go ahead and hit save. And then I can have my sponsors loop going on my scaled video section. So this is how Display Studio and Content Studio works. Display Studio, we build the buttons to trigger the content that we created within Content Studio. Okay. So now that I've covered pretty much what a standard video system is, <coughs> what the signal flow is, so all the components, your digital media player, your image processor, and your video board, and then the front end equipment, which is show control that controls it, I'm going to let you guys know what a couple of our support resources are because we have many places available online to help with any questions that may arise for you guys. Our first support resource and probably the most helpful is the Dactronic Knowledge Base. And the Knowledge Base is a collection of support articles that are searchable for specific problems. Um, we also have track software quick guides that are available to you guys. So what the Knowledge Base is, if I go to dactronics.com support and go to the Knowledge Base, this is what the page will appear as. And you can type in any issue. Or maybe you just don't remember how to do something, like how did Ashley tell me how to import a graphic? Go ahead and type in import graphic. And any article we have about importing graphics will appear um, here for the knowledge base. It's like, how do I import or bring in a still image into Content Studio? And again, it's going to tell you exactly what I just showed you guys in Content Studio. So that's how the knowledge base works. You type in your issue or your question into the search bar, and then every article that we have written about it will appear, and then you just find the article that best matches your question or your um, troubleshooting issue. The next support resource we have available to you guys is the Dactronic Systems YouTube page. So if you go to youtube.com slash Dactronic Systems, here you'll find videos that explain all of the equipment available to you in your standard video system, all the way up to loading content and creating an entire show. Um, because these videos deal with every facet of our control systems. And we do have specific playlists for both stats and track equipment. Um, and videos are being added all of the time for you guys. Um, I would suggest coming back and checking our YouTube page about once a month to see what videos have been added and updated to help you guys. The next support resource we have is the Datronic Control Panel Blog. Articles are published regularly um, regarding a variety of control system and sport specific information by a variety of authors. So we have engineers and trainers writing these articles. Uh, and the control blog answers common questions that we hear from you guys. So, so these are written specifically with you in mind. And they're giving you tips and tricks about your system. Uh, and the control panel blog specifically uh, contains many show control articles to answer the most frequently asked questions that are coming from all of you. And then our final support resource is Dectronic Services. Uh, we have two types of services that you can request from us. We have non-urgent requests and we have urgent requests. And to access this, again, you're just going to dectronics.com slash support. Uh, and when you get to this page, again, the two types of requests that we have are urgent and non-urgent requests. And the difference between the two is when you come in here to dectronics.com slash support, you'll choose contact service and you'll see non-urgent versus urgent. Urgent is when you need to speak to a help desk technician immediately. 
Um, you know, you're in the middle of a track meet and all of a sudden your stats aren't working and you need to need some help right away with getting those stats back up and running. Um, that's what your urgent service request is. And you have a number available to you that's available 24-7, 365. So this is just letting you know, have your case number available if you have one. Um, if this is your first time calling in, then you'll be given one afterwards. The second type of service we have is a non-urgent service request. And this is typically if you need um, extra parts, if you need a new piece of equipment, if a piece of equipment has died and a technician needs to come out and fix it or change it out, um, if you have account information questions, things like that. Uh, so a non-urgent request, you'll actually submit a form. And to do that, you just click this little orange icon. And the form will appear. And you just fill out your information, your name, your organization, phone number. And then at the bottom, you'll tell us what it is you need. I need to order parts, I need some troubleshooting, I need some account information, and then you can describe it a little bit more in detail here, and then you just select submit. Um, so those are the two types of services we have available uh, for contacting service. Urgent for when you need something right away, typically when you're in event and you need to speak immediately with a help desk technician, and then non-urgent for when we need parts, uh, we need account information, and things like that. All right. So you guys have any questions about standard video system, uh, any of the components, signal flow, uh, show control, anything like that? Are there any questions? Looks like we have somebody typing, Ashley. I would suggest uh, for uh, another uninterruptible power supply that you guys go through Dexconic to order another one. Question about your stat board that you created. Is there a way to make that so that it populates um, as the athletes finish with the first place filling and then the second place filling, or is it only able to populate by the lanes that we would place them in? I actually want to say that the stat frame that I was building um, is their places. So it'll, so when you pull it in here for line one, it's just going to say that this is first place, and they were in lane six. Their name is Ashley, and they're affiliated with the stat zone. And then it's going to give you their time. So if you build out a graphic that has eight lines, you just pull in or just line for the eight. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, Ashley, if you want to release control, we can go on to the resources page so everybody can take a look at the uh, links. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move over to the resources page. And as Ashley had mentioned previously, there's a number of files available to everybody and also web links. Uh, in order to download the files on the files pod, uh, just click on the top right corner of the files pod and choose download all. So uh, you can go ahead and save those to your desktop if you'd like to. And then the other thing that we have then is the web links. And we've got a number of manuals and quick guides, uh, links to the Dactronics YouTube page, the knowledge base, uh, the control panel blog, and then also uh, the finished links YouTube page. Uh, we also have a survey underneath that web links, and we would love to get your information back on how we did with this free webinar and any other additional free webinars that we could go ahead and give, give you to make your show control system or whatever system you have from Dactronics operate better. 
you have anything else to add, Ashley? Um, I don't think so. I think that's it. Okay. I will keep this webinar open until 9 o'clock. That's about another eight minutes. Everybody can go ahead and uh, download the files and then also go ahead and, and add to the favorites part of your uh, Internet browser, whatever that would be, to uh, get those web links in. And once, once again, please fill out the survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks, everyone. Yep, looks like Casey's typing. Thank you very much, Casey. You're welcome.